ברוכים הבאים בעזרת השם רבותיי. So first we, as usual, our theme is Shalom Bayit, but we're going to start from one pasuk from Mishlei, Mishlei Shalom HaMelech, Alav HaShalom. And we are up to first parak in Mishlei, pasuk Bised Chochmot Bachutz Tarona, that's uh, 20. ברחובות תיתן רולה, בראש הומיות תגרה, בפתחי שערים, בעיר אמריה תומר. Right, these are two פסורים. 20 and 21, the English translation wisdom sings out in the street. This is nowadays. Wisdom sings out in the street, it gives forth its voice. In the squares, it calls out at the head of noisy throngs, at the entrance of the gates. In the city, it speaks its words. Right. So there are a lot of mafreshim on these two psurim. Al Sheikh Kadosh likes uh, liked his his pshat the best. Al Sheikh says that you know Shulam Melech is talking about four different levels. Of, of learning and internalizing the Bible Torah, right? These are the four categories that Shlomo HaMelech talks about. Chochmot, Bachutz, Tarona, that's one. Barchovot, Iten, Kola, it's two. Berosh, Homiyot, Tikra, three. Befitche, Sharim, Ba'ir, Amare, Amar. Right? And Al-Shach HaKadosh says the following. He says, there are four types of people engaged immersing themselves in Torah at different levels. And obviously, you know, the output is going to be different from somebody that learns from the like, you know, lowest le- level of learning Torah compared to somebody who is totally immersed in the Torah. He says, so the first level is Chochmot Bachutz Tarona. Somebody that is superficially. They just, like in a Pasha Pshat, it just goes through the words. I mean, this, this is the, one of the wonder, wonders of Torah Tanakh that, you know, it could, you know, in kindergarten, they speech, teach, teach the same Torah, and then you have Gedolei uh, Olam in their 90s. They are still going through the same parashuyot and getting different insights. So, al Sheikh says, Chochot Bachutz Tarona, that's one who engages only in its simple, superficial meaning. This is Bachutz. It's like outside, just simple Pashut Pshat. Simple understanding of the words. Then you go a level deeper, right? Studying the Torah. That's in Bar Chovot Titen Kola. He's kind of one who studies the plain meaning, but on a deeper level and with broader scope. That's Rechovot, Rechovot Laharchim, to expand on it. So it's, you know, but deeper. Then we come to Pasuk Kaf Aleph, Berosh Homiot Tirra. Right, he's saying one who is completely engrossed, engaging his mind and raising his voice night and day in the study of Torah. That is berosh homiyot tikra. He's totally applying himself to Torah, right? The learning in yeshivot, kollelim, etc. And then, obviously, the 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 fourth level. It's Befitche Sha'arim Ba'ir Amareha Tomer is talking about when he probes, probes the depth of Torah and enters into the hidden inner meanings that goes into even you know, Kabbalah and the secrets of the Torah. Right? This is what Shulam And obviously, right, the, the results are going, to be, are going to be different. And uh, right, we know, like, you know, we believe in the concept of that Torah. Uh, Torah tells us that in every generation, whenever you have doubts in, in any area, I'm going to give you gedolim. I'm going to give you leaders that these are not these gedolim are never elected. They are not elected officials. You recognize who are the gedolei hador, right? And these are the individuals that are up to like, you know, the fourth level that Al Shach Hakadosh is interpreting in what Shmuel Melech says. The ones that befitche shoarim ba'ir amareha tomer amareha tomer, they are the ones that really could lead and give us insights how to live our lives. And uh, so it's, it's in, in every generation, in any ger- generation, Hakadosh Baruch Hu does give us 
right? Um, these Gedolim, and this is the whole concept of that Torah. I remember when I went to Yeshua to Baltimore, I had problems with that. <laughs> I mean, coming from a college environment, like, you know, that it's studying and this and professors and this and that, and it's basically relying on your own understanding and intellect. Come to, to the yeshiva, you know, you want to date this and that. Go, 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 ask the Ad Torah. Oh, what's the Ad Torah? But this is that, this is what Shalom Melech says. That, you know, that somebody that really is totally immersed in the Torah, even you, you might think that uh, they don't know what's going on in the outside world, right? But that's not true. As somebody who is, who is, you know, hafokhba va hafokhba de kulaba. Everything is in the Torah. And somebody when goes deep in the Torah, it's really anything that has to do with creation. Right? So Torah is the blueprint of creation. And in any area of life, right, that that Torah that, you know, comes from somebody who's Kulo Torah, right, it's, 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 it's a gift from HaGadosh Baruch for every generation. And without any doubts, Rav Volbe was one of those uh, Neorot that HaGadosh Baruch Hu sent us. And, and we are reviewing together his tips on Shalom Bayit. Right, we, we have spoken about this to what extent, right, that, you know, Bereshit Bayit is Rosh. This because, you know, I was talking to somebody who's, uh, you know, Bliyayin uh, he's not a young person. And he had some challenges about his... Uh, I mean, his children, whatever, you know, married children, even. So I told him, look, you know, first and foremost, this is top priority. Shalom Bayit is top priority. You have a lot of duties, a lot of responsibilities, but the first is Bayit Rosh. Bayit Rosh, that relationship that you have with your wife, it's something that has to be in the, you know, front burner. You have to give it, uh, to give it the um, importance that, you know, that it deserves, right? Put everything aside, you need to work on it, right? Yes. Top priority. So, so Torah tips are, are could be very different from the insights that you would get from the outside world, right? But Torah starts with Bereshit, Bait Rosh. We spoke about some concepts. That, you know, I mean, I'm just wondering, like you know, because I know that Baruch Hashem had a lot of hits on this, uh, on the, on the, on YouTube. And ladies are also, listen, I don't know how they take this when we say, when the Torah tells us that marriage is a yoke. We spoke, we have been speaking about this at length. <coughs> that, uh, right, that Tov Lagever, right, Asher Yisa Ol Bin Urav, the Pasuk in Echa, the Gemara says, it's talking about marriage. And, and it's good, he says, it's good for a person to get, uh, you know, how young a person should get married. I mean, it says, Neurav, Neurav. So Rav Volbe himself used to say, when a boy says, I was talking to somebody whose son is 22, I, t- I told him a bit, he's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's too, too, uh, too early for him. My Rosh Hashiva, you know, had a Kabbalah from Chafetz Chaim, that 23 is the ripe age. But when we were discussing it, I told him, look, his son was 22, I told him, look, Rav Olbe says, when a boy says that he's ready to get married, he's ready to get married. It's not 18 was anymore. What? I thought I was ready when I was 16. You were ready when you were 16? I said I was ready. Ah. Okay, Baruch Hashem. No, I mean, it could be, uh, you know. Anyway, so I guess the younger, the younger, the better. Tov la gever asher yisa ol ol isha, that, you know, because uh, when a calf gets that all under, uh, under uh, right, on them, they get used to it much, much earlier, and it becomes easier. You know, someone was saying, like in my, Mechutan uh, says they should get, 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 get marry them off young and dumb, young and dumb, young and dumb, young and dumb. <laughs> but it, has, it can't be too young either, they have to be ready. Anyway, we spoke about different applications of the, of the yoke, and one major thing to remember, as we said, is that you know, ladies go through different you know, cycles and moods. Right. And, uh, and again, you know, this is something that you know, men have. In, it's, it's not, it, in none of things that we discuss is being judgmental. These are, if anybody has any complaints, men or women, 
If they have any complaints about it, they have to go to the manufacturer. They have to go to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Hakadosh Baruch Hu has created men and women different, right? And I think this is um, the central point problem with Shalom Bayit. Men and women don't realize that you know they are not you know. And I think this is some of it. It's like you know, it's the the destructive effects of the outside world and you know what what we are like you know bombarded with feminism etc etc and so you know this this is this is narishkai this mamash it's nonsense men and women are different and you see that realization is everything is everything and it's not we cannot be judgmental you know we, we spoke like last time like you know like you know the fear that you know ladies have about like you know insects this and that i mean it's not logical but it's, it's a reality, and it's not something to make fun of, uh, of it. It's, 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 we have to realize. Or we spoke about, like, you know, time, you know, that they are not, um, you know, it's, 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 it has a, that there's a reason why HaKadosh Baruch Hu exempted ladies from Mitzvah HaSesh Azman Girama, right? All we know, uh, any, any positive commandment that is time-bound, HaKadosh Baruch Hu has exempted the ladies. Because, you know, they don't have the same concept like, you know, with time, because their time is really totally devoted to the, to the house. Borei Olam HaKadosh Baruch Hu exempted them, right? So we need to internalize these, these differences between men and, and women. And we spoke last time, if you remember, we spoke that, you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, that the husband, everything has to say, chash, chash. It's not. We said... Chachamim tell us, the Torah tells us, a woman wants her husband to lead the house. That's, you know, deep down, every woman. I mean, I, you know, I, you know g- girls, when they, uh, they date, they want somebody who has a backbone. They want somebody who has a backbone, and then they want to rule him. Right? But you see, they, they want somebody, really, that is going to be in the driver's seat. And you know, we said something very essential last time, that we know that men are from, men are chesed, women are, women are din. Men in Kabbalah, men are chesed, women are din. Men that are in the driver's seat, but it has to be with chesed. It's not dictatorship, right? We said it's so important that, you know, if we, if we look at the, the stuff men and women are made of, men are made from dirt and, and ladies are from bone. And the only way, basically, to be able to shape that bone is lashon raka tishpor garem. How a husband talks to his wife, it's everything. I hope in it, this is uh, everything, everybody is agreeable to this, right? We, are, we don't have any debates over this. Lashon raka tishpor garem. Lashon raka tishpor garem. A major, major role that a husband, that is a midat, and he's sitting in the driver's seat is, is how you talk to your wife. That's why we said Rambam, uh, right, emphasizes the kavod. The kavod, you know, that you know, that has to build ahava and kavod. Kavod is one of the things of kavod, is the way we talk. And mamash lashon raka tishbor garim, that bone, which is what the main women are made from, the Gemara says, the Gemara says, it's much harder to be mefayes ladies than men. Men, they have a fight or something, they could maybe beat each other up, and yeah, let the finish, move on. But uh, with ladies, it's totally, it's a different, it becomes, it's etched in stone. So this is, we are just, uh, we were reviewing this uh, last time. We, we move on now to some, some, uh, some new concept, new concepts. Uh, See, Rav Volbe talks a lot about, like, you know, that, you know, how, how a husband really needs to be the Rav of the, you know, when it comes, anything that comes with Torah, Yerat, Shamayim, etc., it's really the role of the, of the husband to be, to, to lead the family in that, in that sense as well. As well. A lot of times for, uh, like, you know, colored guys, etc., that they are, have, they are engrossed in deep pilpul, etc., it's like, you know, it's beneath them, so to speak, to come and to talk to the, you know, Ashkafa or different things with the wives. And he gives them 
he admonishes them that you know that this is wrong, and he brings here a story that you know Rabbi Kiva Eger, Rabbi Kiva Eger, Eger, Eger was without any doubts Rashka Bahag. He was Rabban Shul Kol Bnei Hagola. In his generation, he was the greatest. And um, at one point, he writes and he gave it to in a letter to. To, to his friends after his wife passed on, and he says, Nobody knew the greatness of my, my wife more than me. Sometimes I can until midnight, like, you know, he would take off from his precious time of learning. Godol Ador what to have discussions with, with his wife. You know, and, and to be able, you know, we know how to, you know, it has to be, uh, right? How does it say in the Pasuk? HaKadosh Baruch told Moshe Rabbeinu, Ko tomar lebet Yaakov, right? V'taged libnei Yisrael. HaKadosh Baruch told Moshe Rabbeinu, to the ladies, have to be amira. Amira is amira raka, in a soft way. To the men, devarim kashim kekidim, kekidim. There it could go be harsh. When it comes, you know, to you know, to trying to like you know, Torah concepts, whether it's halacha, etc. So it has to be amira raka, and it you know, and it's really it's one of the roles that the husbands do have, right? Do have towards their wives. Here, Avodah brings something that you know, us as Bnei Torah, it's really in you know, eye opening. Avodah says. Right, we know, we know, we all, any Ben Torah knows that, you know, he, he, Hashem put him here on this planet Earth, right, as, as uh, Derech Hashem Ramchal tells us, HaKadosh Baruch Hu has put us on planet Earth for three purposes, right, the mitz- to do the mitzvot, obviously, mitzvot Hashem, right, to withstand nisyonot, to go through ordeals of life, that's, that's definitely one of the purposes why we are here on planet Earth. And thirdly, to work on our midot, to refine ourselves, right? That's, you know, again, three purposes why we are on planet Earth. Obviously, to do the mitzvot of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to withstand Nisyonot, right? In the famous Zohar HaKadosh, that when Zohar HaKadosh tells, uh, uh, says that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Avraham Avinu, Lech lecha, ma'aretzcha me'olatecha. The Zohar HaKadosh says that, you know, here, um, Avraham is our soul. The Zohar says, Avraham, it's our soul is called Avraham. And our goof is called Sarah. That's Zohar HaKadosh and Parashat Lech lecha. So the HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells our neshama, which is Avraham in Olam Hababai in Kisa Kavod, Lech Lecha. Here, you don't have anything to do. You have to go here, come here on, on planet Earth, right? To go to marry Sarah, to go into a goof, and like Avraham Avinu, to withstand Asaran Yisionot, and 10 is number of completion. This is clearly, the Zohar HaKadosh says, one of the purposes that we are here, we are put on planet Earth. And we are constantly... Constantly, we are faced with nisyonot. There is no person that does not have nisyonot, doesn't have trials and ordeals in his life. Uh, everything, everything in life, Shlomo Melech says, you know, wealth, it's, it's a nisyon, it's a, uh, right, it's, 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 it's an ordeal. And uh, poverty, only it's poverty, it's, it's, it's a nisyon. Good health, it's a nisayon, right? Uh, and also, God, God, for, God forbid, sickness is a nisayon, right? John Melech says, you know, uh, everything you, you know, success is a, is a and success usually it's, it's a much more difficult test than uh, failure, chas But everything is a nisayon. Every, everybody, this is one of the purposes. And then the third thing is that we are put here on planet Earth to work on our midot. To refine our characteristics, to work on our midot, and we know that Gaon Vilna says on Mishle, he says, uh, uh, if a person does not work on his midot, he's going to be sent back. And he says, if you want to know 
exactly why a lot of people, you know, I wanted to go to Gadol to ask him, ask him why, was, why did I come back to Gilgul? Right? So the answer is, the Gaon says, that the, you, a person has to see what is the characteristic, right, that is the most difficult for him to work on it, that's a sign. That's the one that he came for. Whether it's anger, whether it's like, you know, being, uh, like, you know, not, not having order in life, any, you know, any midah, any characteristic that we see, it's a challenge for us. That's the reason why we are back here. Now listen to this. Rav Olbe says, Rabbeinu Reb Chaim Vital, right, it's, you know, Reb Chaim Vital, it was older than Arizal, we know that. But he was the Talmid, Muvhak of Arizal. All the writings that we have from Arizal, so Reb Chaim Vital. And uh, Reb Chaim Vital, we know he, he was, Arizal was in Mitzrayim. He came to Tzfat, basically, to, to reveal all the secrets of Kabbalah to to Rebbe Vital, and, uh, and he pushed Rebbe Chaim uh, uh, Arizal too much, even. And that's why uh, Arizal revealed too much, and prematurely, you know, young, he left this world, Arizal. So all the Torah of Arizal, we have it from Rebbe Chaim Vital. And Rebbe Chaim Vital says the following, Midotav shel Adam, now, if a person wants to know to what extent he has been successful working on his Characteristics, characteristics and his midot, Ruchasoelish. He says what? Nimdadot achverak kefi yachasoelishto. It all comes out to the relationship that he had with he had he has with his wife. <laughs> Again, he says. Achverak, he says exclusively. Who would know if a person is a Ben Torah, right, has, what kind of midot he has? Does he, did he work on his midot or not? He says the only judge is, uh, if our wives uh, listen to this, we're in bad shape. Right? He says, but you know, it's Torah. I mean, it's, it's really, it's, you have to realize, it's everything it's here that we say, a lot of things, it's, it's reversible. I mean, it's, you know, I'm talking to a crowd, and you know, Rebbe Vital is talking to men. It's, it's your spouse, actually, right? Because nobody really knows us more in, intimately than, than our spouses. It says, Achverak, Achverak, it's underlined. Achverak exclusively, right? Kefi yachasoshel ishto klomar adam haosek begemach. You could have a person that he is the biggest baal chesed in shul. Everything he's doing it, he's doing it, gathering the swarim, pudding, opening. No matter, you know, anybody needs a helping hand, he's there. Malveh venoten, he has a gemach. Remember, he lends money to people. He's a giver, giver. Mevaker cholim. Goes, goes to visit the sick. Menachem, if somebody needs, God forbid, like in Nechum Avalim, he's there. Mesameh Hatan Vekala. He is the Ish Chesed par excellence, right? Bevaday, so he's going to be Yishak Yom Acharon. He's going to be very happy. Wow, I have done so much. Look, you know, every mitzvah, you know, Ma'od Ve'esena. What, what else is, is left to do? This person has to know. In Shamaim, he's going to be judged how he treated his wife. And, his, and her, again, it, it did the same thing with the woman. It could be the exact same scenario with a woman. She could be the most, you know, giving and this and that, but in Shamaim, the judgment is going to be what? He's going to be judged how he or she acted with their spouse. This is uh, shattering, right? Im gam imah gamal chesed kol if also, if, if 
چی میگن به فارسی میگن چراغی که به منزل رواز به مسجد حرام است where they get it from this is any any type any time that you see a metro to another show if there is any saying that in our culture persian here and that it's emet it's from the torah guaranteed emet emet comes from the torah where did they get it from چراغی به منزل رواز به مسجد حرام است this is exactly what arizal is saying You think the true judge is going to be if this person was a Baal Chesed or not, the true, the, 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 the true judge is going to be his, his, his spouse. Im gam ima gam al chesed kol yamav, ashrav v'tov lo achim, im otam, ota hiknit v'hizniach. I'm listening to this tape. Somebody comes and kills, to, tells uh, Rav Ben Tzion Abba Shaul, this mekubal, he says, mekubal shu mekubal. He says, what, Mekubal? He called this person a Mekubal? A Gaon? He says, Kodem she, how did he say? Kodem she yedach litagi mishto. First he has to learn how to treat his wife. Mama Shura Benzion was mevatel this person, he doesn't say the name. Somebody that he knew was known as a Mekubal. He says, Mekubal, Shemekubal, it's all empty words. Kodem, first, he has to learn how to, how he acts with his, how he treats his wife. Right? So, Achim, if he has a knife and a knife in his hand, he says, he says, if a person had anger, anger at home, temper, without any merciless, this is going to, this is going to go to Gehinom. This Baal Chesed that was apple of each party, and it was always there, To, uh, to you know to extend the, uh, to, to extend a helping hand here and there is going to you know because the 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 yardstick it's it's how the, that that relationship husband and wife right ze makhiyat dino velo yizkaru lo meuma mikol khasadav sha say makhim all the khasad that this person did with others are all delete Right. It's, the, and it's exactly what Dr. Ben Sion said. Mekubal shmekubal. What is it? Kodem, first he should learn how to treat his wife. Right? So, you see, um, I don't know if, uh, I'm not sure, I haven't gone through the thing for years before I'm, I'm preparing as we go ahead. I assume that maybe Rav Wolbe is going to talk about Kaas. But you see, Kaas, you know, angers, Specifically, right, the Gemara singles, <coughs> singles out anger as the worst, you know, the, the most destructive thing that could, could ruin a household. Right, the Gemara in Masachet Sota says that um, a household that you have anger in, in such ways we spoke about it, like in sesame seeds, you're going to have worms. If you have worms, and says, nothing is salvaged. If an apple has, has a worm, it could salvage something. But the Gemara says, a household that, you know, anger goes there, right? It's, and it's very interesting to know, I mean, this is also I learned from, uh, from this, the nephew of Rav Ben Zion, that Sim Kubalim say that, let's, you know, think about it, let's say one of the, One of the main things that causes anger is money. Financial things. That's, that's one of the main reasons. Because Mekubalim say the, the Shorash, uh, from the, the, the Shorashim, when it comes to Sfirot, and the roots of the Shorashim, there is something about ladies, and there is about, right, you know, about money, and about anger. So they say, like, you know, they just somehow, and, you know, since I heard that, I've been thinking about it a lot. It's really a lot of shalom bait, a lot of anger at home. The cause of it, it's money. Money, you know, monetary things, financial things, cause a lot of distress. And anger, Right. So, so you know, if if per, uh, now, this is this is you know, anger. Whatever is the reason for anger, it needs to be treated. So therefore, one of the best things really when it comes to 
financial matters. It's uh, Rav Holbe says the best thing is that a person like he's talking mostly to Avrahim, people that you know that you know they're learning in Kolin. But I think it's applicable to all of us. He says the best thing is that a husband should say, "Honey, if if she's willing to take charge, he says, honey, this is how much I bring home every month. Why you decide how to?" how to spend the money. I, I think in our community, this is, uh, I know some people that do that, but you see a lot of times, husbands don't, you know, don't even tell their wives how much they have. Right? <laughs> yes, you have no, comments. No, no. no that, that's But me. <laughs> you don't. She doesn't need to worry. No, you see, no, to... But you see, the, you see if, if a person creates false impression, you see, a woman wants security. But you see, that security cannot be false. Well, not to lie to her, but you know, she doesn't need to have the stress of what comes if in. If she doesn't the want, that's what okay. There are, there are ladies like that. They say, I don't want to know. And I don't want to take responsibility. And then it's okay. But you see, but it's 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 very important that in a checking account, whatever they have, is together, right? You see, you know, but there's the own real estate. These obviously the, the marriage has to be on the right foundation. That means that this this money thing. I always, uh, uh, whenever couples, you know, I, I tell them I, I'm very much for a fair halachic prenuptial. So you have to realize that you know the, the 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 system we had in Iran was a very good system. All the fights and every everything was before the marriage. They would write what amount to write in the ketubah, but God forbid, God forbid, if it was something that you know, and Baruch Hashem, we didn't have uh, too many of those in Iran. When it came to divorce, there were no lawyers, nothing. You see, when you have the ketubah, this financial thing is taken out of, you know, out of context. It's, it's, it's not part, because a lot of the tensions are exactly on that. I'm dealing now, right, you know, some cases that this is exactly the, the problem I am. I tell them, so even in, they don't have, a, you know, is, are there any problems with post naturals Because, uh, you know, I was, I was suggesting to a couple, they have some kids also, I said, no, even now it's not too late. Make a post natural It they doesn't can. hold in court? No, it actually holds in court. Yeah? But... It's easier to find it unconscionable because once the person is in marriage, she can say, well, "I have no choice." But you see, you see, whatever way you look at it, like what Rav Volbe says, you have to get that really, you know, money is is one of the main causes of temper and anger at household. It's money matters. Anger needs to be uprooted, right? So first we have to be preventive to see what sorts of things cause anger. And even if, if, if it doesn't help, then, you know, it's, it, it, we have to go to therapy, etc., and maybe to medi medicate it. A household cannot, cannot, does not have any chance of, like, you know, of making it and, and of existence if the temper issue, that's what the Gemara says. If you have temper at, at a household, it's exactly, you have worms in sesame seeds. Needs to be treated. So one way of really, you know, taking the tension, the financial tension out of marriage is first of all, a fair, right, reasonable prenuptial, and that, you know, that everything is taken care of, that even the get issue, God forbid, right, it's... Uh, Usually, like, you know, the, the halachic prenuptial, they submit themselves that, you know, the rabbi that um, married them, he should have the final word as far as they get. Is that, right. is that uh, kosher? Right? Yes, yes. I, I, had, I went to a wedding where the rabbi made them sign before the ketubah that if it comes to that time and he doesn't want to give the gate, get, the He's rabbi is, is basically the in charge of giving the gifts. No, this is, it doesn't work like that. They tell me, if the rabbi says he has to get, give the get, he has to give the get, and every day that he's going to delay it, he's going to be fined this much money. Oh, 
So the, because he has to give out of his, he has to be willing. Right? Let's not go there. But you know, this is, there are ways. There are uh, good prenuptial halachi, and it has to be fair. It has to be fair to both parties. So that's one way of taking out the tension out of marriage. The other thing is, aside from that, is as I said, as far as you know, the the income that they have, they should live within their means. Right? This is this is this is, this is how much I'm bringing home. You want to be in charge. I want to. This is it to to be. I think open about it, not to because a lot of the I don't know. Oh, he's hiding money here. He's hiding money there. He's helping his his parents. He's helping this. I have been. There's nothing wrong to to uh, helping the parents. If they're helping, the, the, the parents are, 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 God forbid, no parents should, should need their, their, their children's help. But when it comes to tzedakah, you know, to maser, etc., families first, right? And, you know, and both of them have to respect that. But you see, so this guy, oh, I don't know what his dad does with the money and this and that. You see, when it's left, like, you know, when there are a lot of, you know, there's no clearance and there's no openness, it creates a lot of room, it, 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 it creates fights, right? So it needs to be bechuchmah, needs to be administered bechuchmah. And one way is really to the honey, this is how much I, I could bring home every month, right? Let's together plan it. If you want to be in charge, you want me to be in charge of, like, uh, you know, it's, yes, <laughs> the attorney has. Sorry, <coughs> it's just, if. That anger is because of financials, then it would it makes sense if the person says, "Okay, here's my money, and you figure out how to spend it." And she's going to get angry because it's not enough. <laughs> okay, okay. If or, it's or enough, she, this is zem What do you mean? And she leaves. Then that, that's where the anger is, because she has friends or she has family. Another family. I mean that that's something you see if 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 from the beginning of the relationship he promised her who knows it, it, this this is there is no trust there. You see trust in marriage it's everything and when they go out it has to be everything. Honey, this is how much I, I, I'm able to know right now, this is how much I could I could make. Could you live it? You know, you can't go with illusions and what kind of lifestyle you're gonna promise her. You're right. And, okay, but if you're if the main main problem of anger is financial, you just told me it's, it's something else. So no, it, 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 this is system. it. This is it. You have to be solution oriented. <laughs> it's a fact. It's a fact from my experience, and it's from what the Mekubalim say. Mekubalim say that you know the roots of anger and money. Are, are the comfort, this is a couple of the same thing that you know really you know money money issues are one it's not the only it's one of the main reasons that there is fights and there is there is anger at home and we need to be to be smart about it and to be proactive about it and to see how we could take, take that thing out and, and it has and so I'm suggesting aside from prenuptial the thing would be that you know to you know to, to, to have a sunshine po- policy openness. This is what we have, and we have to live within our means. You want to be in charge of it, right? If she agrees, you're better off. But a lot of times they don't agree. And oh, we don't have. So what do you want to do? Cafe mudachimik and mukidarimi. Yes. So. So this, this really only applies to someone who doesn't have anger issues outside. If someone has I'm, general anger yeah, issues... Okay, yes, it's uh, obviously, you see again, I, I, you know, listen to what I said. I said the financial thing needs to be dealt with in a proactive manner. If that doesn't eliminate right, the anger, so then, you know, you have to see, you know, I am definitely, you know, so, so, some individuals, if the Musar doesn't do it, that, you know, how destructive anger is, a person should learn Musar. If the Musar doesn't do it, he needs, he needs therapy, and if needed, he needs to be medicated. That, that's, that, that, that's a reality. But we have to realize, it's not, you know, that's what the Gemara says. If this temper anger issue is not dealt with, there is no house.
And we know that. And we know that, you know, how many, unfortunately, you know, uh, households <coughs> fell apart because of that. Okay. So anyway, it's not going anywhere. so let's go. So, so anger, it's only one of the midot that we have to deal with. But as, uh, as, Ram, uh, as uh, Rab Chaim Vital said, right, but you know, we have to realize it's as far as our uh, spiritual being and our purpose in this world, our spouses, they are the judges if we have the proper midot or not. That's the ultimate judge. And he sits in Kubali, when you go deeper, they say, you know, our relationship with Hashem, Chida says, our relationship with Hashem is really the indicator, it's our relationship with our spouse. If we don't have peace with our spouse, Hashem is not happy with us. Chida says that. Does it parents or with, with what? Your wife! <laughs> we learn the way that you look at your father is the way that you look at It's true. <clears throat> you, you see that, you see, we say that, that it's, it's not a contradiction. You see, we view HaKadosh Baruch Hu the way our father figure was. If our father was a kind, kind person, reasonable person, nice, that's how we view Hashem. If, if, if our father was... A, and angry, beating up, this and that. So that's how we're going to look at Hashem. That's how we look at Hashem. But in reality, if we want to know how does Hashem look at us, <laughs> right? It's, you know, if we have peace with our wife, HaKadosh Baruch is going to be happy with us also. And it goes both ways, husband and wife. Right, this is, uh, these are like, you know, earth-shattering you know, truths of Torah. What Rabbi Chaim Vital says and what, what the Chida says. We don't like to hear that. We don't like to hear, but this is, this is, a, this is a reality. Right? So, Dai Bedavar Norazel Leorer Kol Echad Vechad Levali Hiyeh Tov Lev Michutz Lebeito He says what we said. It should be a lesson for everybody that it should not be Tov Lev Michutz Lebeito to be giving and nice and friendly outside in shul at work, the kapdan the ralev the toch beito, and to be uh, you know at, at 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 home a cruel, impatient, right, uh, angry person. Umi besaro lo yit alam, right? You know, husband and wife were considered besaro. It's like you know, you know, it's 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 one body. So nazkir kan od nekuda achat, achashuva le yitzirat ruach tov abayit vehi hanhalat hameshek kaspi. He says, right, you know, the fine, as we said, the, the finan- finances of the household are so crucial. So he says, A husband cannot, be, cannot use that as a you know, power. Right, you know, oh, I'm bringing the money, I'm spending money, so that should give me power. That, you know, ain't lahanik sirara. Shahabal sholet be kupa ve noten le ishto be tzimtzum. That he gives a couple of dollars every week, etc. He doesn't say he's not he's not open with his wife how much money they have, if they have CDs, investments, this, that. A person no, if she knows she's gonna go and spend and this, right? Okay, that, that's, um, that's one way of looking at it. But you see, I know so many husbands that didn't do it. And when, you know, when, they, when, when there, uh, it's ups and downs, then there, you know, uh, the man, I, I had a lady, you know, I went with this, went out with this guy when he was driving a fancy car, whatever this and that. And he promised me that he's going to take care of me. That I'm going to be, he's going to, he's going to be able to give me certain uh, uh, status, right? And now he, bunch I, I have been a good wife. Any shortcomings on my end? That's his problem. That's his problem. If the husband would have been open with his wife from day one, right? I mean, this is what I'm, I, I have right now, and this is how much I could provide. 
but you could be the Shamayim. There are ups and downs. Hariyat Mekudushet Li. Li is Lamed and Yud. Right? In Shalom, you should Lamed Boshe. But you see, when, when they are not partners and she's kept in dark, so then you, you suffer, the, 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 suffer the consequences. That's what Rav, Rav Bulba says. Vim Yishlo Cheshbon Babank. Right? If he goes, like, you know, he has any bank account that he has, it should be both of them. Both names. Right? Hanhaga Kazob, you see if a person he say he say and you see he's talking with Kolel guys that a lot of times they are the women are the breadwinners. <laughs> right? He's sitting in Kolel, but she she has a job, whatever. Obviously it has to be partnership. It's it's both of them together. So Yesh Lenahel Kesafim Bishutafut Ubihitiatsut Allahut Sao, they have to spend the money together. They decide together. This is our income, our joint income, whatever it is, or, or, or his, whatever. And these are our expenses together that she needs to be partner in it. So, right. And obviously, they have, he emphasizes that they have to, to live within their, 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 their limits. Right? Not, you know, to, to worry and like, you know, to, you know, people, that, so many people I you know, they go and constantly borrow money from these, and then where are you going to pay, uh, uh, pay it back, back from? Right? You know, it's so important that they should, they have the discipline and to live within, within their, 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 their means. Right? And ultimately, right, we know the, you know, whether, you know, should, should a, does a wife have to work or not? Obviously, we know the ketubah that the ketubah is signed only by the husband. What's the reason that you know women do not sign the ketubah? More than two, because you know the signature goes and take upon, upon themselves financial responsibilities, and right, ladies do not take any financial responsibilities according to the Torah. The responsibility, the breadwinner, is the husband. Even in a college situation. So I, I know Rabban David told somebody, okay, they, okay I, I'm not in college. Okay, what should I do? So he told somebody here, so go, go stand on Pico. Right, you know, Pico La Brea, I think they <laughs> take laborers. Go get a job and, and support your family. What do you mean? What are we going to do? Right, the, the obligation, right, the Ketubah that we signed, that's the reason why the... Chatan signs the ketubah, not, uh, not the kala, the, the bread, if she wants to help and she's able to help. And I think, personally, it's very healthy. Provided that, you know, if you know, at, at age that, you know, that the kids are older, at their school, etc. I think, you know, if possible, when the kids are young, uh, ladies should not work. If, if they could manage financially. Preferable to that she would be a full-time, uh, you know, there is nothing... Uh, more important than raising the children and taking care of the house. But in the later, definitely, it's, you know, a lot of problems we have in the communities. Like, these ladies don't have anything to do. <laughs> I'm telling you, they don't have anything to do. You know, a lot of uh, beautiful uh, Beverly Hills ladies, they don't have anything to do. They don't know. Kids are older, they are in school, this and that. Uh, they have, you know, take care of the house. That's when, you know, a maid, what do they do? What do they do? They just, I'm telling you, oh, it's mingling and, and uh, droning, uh, you know. The Gemara says, like, you know, being idle, not being busy, it's the worst, worst curse. And unfortunately, it's very true. I always, I have class for ladies, I tell them. I tell them, I tell them learn from my, my wife. Now she's in a PhD program. Go study, do something with your, your life. So what do you do? What do you do the whole day? It's it, but it, this is not for younger. When they have children, when it's an age of like you know, till till the kids are not in school yet, uh, you know, when the kids are out of uh, out of the house in school, then then you know, it's, it's healthy, and also they would appreciate it more. Like you see, it's not easy <laughs> to, to 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 earn money. They would appreciate their husbands also more. Anyway, Be'ezrat Hashem will continue next week.